Right, welcome to the Value Script. We are live from Buckeye, Arizona. <laughs> the studio with the babe. The babe is in the house. How's it going, babe? Super great. Good. Nice to see you. Thanks. You look lovely. Thanks, love. Hey, so I uh, kind of wanted to talk about a couple comments we've gotten. Oh, I, I do also want to follow up with what we just talked about on the last episode about um, being a good companion and, and a good partner. Um, and there was a point I brought up on break. Do you remember what that was? Yeah, you were talking about I just doing, forgot your, it. doing your continued education. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So one thing I noticed was as I was uh, progressing in my professional career, and there was a lot of things going on at once. We were having more children. You know, our family was growing. Um, I was getting more and more responsibilities at church. And so in our, in our religious experience, I had some responsibilities and things. And, and then also professionally as a pediatric dentist, but also um, – putting on continuing education courses myself, even uh, at certain points in my career, I've taught continuing education classes and lectured, but also going to continuing educational classes and lectures and meeting some of the dynamic speakers. I mentioned Doug Fields is one of them, but there's been a, a lot. And um, a lot of that is very intellectually stimulating. And it, and then also with the, you know, the church has some educational things that we were going to as well. And that was enriching and stimulating. And so I was being enriched and stimulated, I feel like on a different level than you were. And I feel like that started to play out a little bit in our relationship. And um, I just think, and I just want to speak to the point that it's important, I feel as couples to seek enlightenment at the same time, you don't have to do the same things, because you probably don't need the same information to improve yourselves with. But some of the things It is good to have at the same time. And you were just talking about 75 hard. Do you want to talk about how our experience was with that and how that kind of changed that dynamic to a certain extent? It was really so fun. That was one, to me, like the funnest part of 75 hard was the reading and talking about the things that we were reading, like, because there were so many, um, like we were reading a lot of psychology books and like which um, ones, like what were some of your favorites? Um, how to do the work. The phenomenal. Oh, yes. Phenomenal book. Um, and so many times I'd be reading and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so Lonnie. And I'd share it with you and it's like, wow, you know, we could totally relate or you'd well, read that was, something. And that was also a non-threatening way to bring those things up. Like, yeah. Hey honey, I just read this in this book. And I, I wondered if you've gone through this or felt this because it resonated with me that perhaps you have. And then, so that gave us a very non-threatening way to talk about something that was really difficult. It was hard, yeah. Right? And it was re- that was really good. That book is phenomenal, by the way. Do you want to grab it real quick? So good, it. yeah. Maybe we could get Dr. LaPera on the show someday. Yeah. Might be part of the dream guest list. But um, <clears throat> if you have not read this work, this work, this book, How to Do the Work, Nicole LaPera, um, if um, Dr. Nicole LaPera, don't want to discredit her at all. But, um, and then 12 Rules for Life, Jordan Peterson. I have not read this one yet, but I've listened to a lot of his YouTube on it. Uh, Meredith read this. I read that one. And and phenomenal. Part of 75 Hard. So so that was really, really, really good for us to be able to, like you said, talk about things that we were reading, but also have greater insight into some of the things that were plaguing us. Because a lot of times you go through these things and you really don't even understand what's happening because a lot of it is your subconscious brain that's kind of taking over and and it's hard to change those dynamics and it's hard to even recognize some of the emotions that you have or why you might have them. Um, so, like, Yeah, and that something to dive into and learn and we should mm-hmm. probably, it'd be great to have Jeff on the show to talk about this, but your, your life experience between birth and six years old largely, largely determines the scope of your subconscious programming. Whatever was going on at that time in your life, whether it was positive or not positive, um, and it could be um, something as simple as not feeling recognized for doing good stuff it can be traumatizing depending on the situation. Or, you know, obviously if there's ob- obvious traumas, like, sexual exploitation or 
abuse of any kind, verbal, physical abuse, or even just just stressed out parents and you're around, you know, and you're a four-year-old and around a stressed out dad, that is, happens a lot. That can be traumatizing. And that can start to create tapes and um, programming in your mind that manifests itself always. And I didn't realize one of the things that was scary to realize as I was going through this work is my subconscious brain has been running the play a lot of the time and I really didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the hardest questions when I was pulled in um, to my stake president's office, I was getting ready to receive some pretty serious church discipline. And he said, Lonnie, why did you do that? And I looked at him and started breathing through, breathing through it, breathing through it. Here we go. <laughs> I looked at him and I honestly said, I don't know. I, I don't know. And I didn't know. And I felt that was shaming because I thought I should know. You know, I am, I am I'm a 40 year old man. I am well educated. I am religious leader like i need to i need to get this together I need, but i don't understand it and so that kind of led me deep into my journey of okay i gotta figure out my brain I gotta understand what's going on uh, this book's fantastic how to do the work it speaks a lot about that it speaks a lot about what to do about it and how to deal with it but ultimately those those times when meredith would you know for for something simple as it's it's wednesday night i need to go to the church i need a white shirt i go in my closet all the white shirts are on the floor all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I come last. You know, I'm not thought of. I mean, it turned into this big old domino, domino knocking down festival in my head of how I just was not regarded or thought of or considered or loved or valued because something as simple as having a white shirt ready, you know, and then um, that would be um, as, as simple of a situation and that's all it would take and it would set me off. And I would go, and that was all came back from how I felt being this, you know, insecure little boy and that was, that was broken to a certain extent. And I did not have a horrible childhood. That's the other thing. Like that was, and that was one thing that was very interesting for me is thinking, okay, how can I have psychological trauma? I had a great life. I had great parents. I had a great family. You know, there were some messed up things, right? But there are in almost every family, not to, not to minimize that at all. I, I realized as that came out of my mouth, that might sound like I'm trying to minimize or marginalize those things there are some horrible things that happen in, in some people's families um but you know honestly and one of the things that dr lapera points out in her book is that it's impossible to raise kids without inducing trauma in them you just aren't it's it's the, it's an imperfect world and you're an imperfect human being and again back to like you said having the grace like being able to, to give yourself that grace and not, is, not create shame yeah it's so important too to realize you might think, oh, that happened a long time ago. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm not dealing with that anymore. I'm in a different situation now. That, it doesn't work that way. If you have trauma, even if you don't recognize necessarily what it is, um, you need help to heal from that. And, and professional counseling is the only way I really know um, of how to really get, dive in and, and do that hard work because it is so hard to even recognize and you can't think that just, oh, I'm going to put it back here in the back of my mind and not think about it, not deal with it. And, and it's fine. It wasn't that bad. It's going to play out in a big way. And I've seen that over and over and over in a lot of different um, marriages and, and people that I love and care about who have struggled and um, looking back and seeing how childhood experiences um, played into that in a large way and they didn't recognize or know until until there's this <laughs> catastrophe in front of them and and then trying to put pieces back together and heal um but but that's that's so important is just to to realize it's it's good and important to get help to heal from your past so back to sex yes <laughs> let's, let's talk about sex so uh, you had a comment from a friend um which you, comment are we talking about is this about the hormones i don't know yes okay yes because i think this plays into everything well, like, what, what comment from which friend well <laughs> whatever 
What are we talking about? Wait, your friend reached out to you and said as he was listening to the podcast and, oh, and oh. about our dynamic and different sex drives and how that, you know, he felt like it was being played out in his marriage as well. And um, one thing that I never realized in the early stages of our marriage, you know, I certainly recognized that we have different sex drive. What I didn't realize was that my hormones were ridiculously off and I really didn't have a sex drive at all. I didn't realize that when I was in it, but looking back as from how I feel now versus how I felt then, um, we have a phenomenal hormone doctor. Would you call him that? Is, is a natural path natural path but, but has really worked with us on getting our hormones balanced right that, um, that has been a huge game changer but game changer. Just, right while you're speaking about that um i'm grateful that you were willing to say that and be transparent about it because you know again you just simply not having a sex drive right i took that as my wife's not into me mm-hmm. two different messages two very different messages but the message i took home was either I'm and it was it wasn't either it was all of these it was I'm not attractive enough I'm not fit enough I'm not good enough at performing and if I was then my wife would want to be all over me if I could just get the recipe and the formula right and and it was frustrating for me and and I would get frustrated and we would talk about it quite a bit um but it never changed I think that's just the thought process of a male we overthink sex yeah, a lot. We overthink the whole situation itself. And well, what do you mean? We overthink like as we like, overthink. Is it like, are we performing good enough? Like, oh. to, like, like I said, are we performing good enough? Or do we look good? Does she find me attractive during all this? Like a lot of times that'll like play into you, your sex drive alone. Sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And then do like, have you, are you even thinking about those things? No, <laughs> that's no, what I mean. That's what I mean. I, that's why I feel like it's just that's just right. we us as being male. I think we just that's just natural for us. We just that we criticize self criticize ourselves. Well, probably, probably because I would I would guess because of the op, when the opposite happens, like if we feel rejected, uh-huh. it activates all that shame. Uh-huh. And so on being offensive about that, not wanting to activate that shame, we're trying to answer those questions on our own, mm-hmm. which. My my shame has nothing to do with her sex drive unless it's so over, overbearing that I can't perform. Then it yeah. does. But but <laughs> um, that's crazy though because all those things certainly did enter my brain and I just started taking the wrong message of, you know, again, my wife's not attracted to me. My wife doesn't want to have sex with me. My and it, cause, And it's something wrong with me because if I brought all the perfect packages to the table because on TV, social media, all your friends' stories, a lot of lies, but, you know, <laughs> you know, they're... The perfect guy walks in the room, his hair's perfect, which I never have the advantage of, but his, <laughs> his hair's perfect. He's in the perfect pants and, you know, the shoes and, and then he just speaks beautifully and then the woman just melts and it's all beautiful and magic and then that's not how it works. So <laughs> I, we unpacked a lot of that stuff in the previous episode, just like yeah. not exactly that, but I'm saying... uh we're diving more into hormones for right. this one, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there something specific that you found out about yourself that was hormonally changing? Well, yeah. So one thing I noticed is when I was in my search to improve my physical appearance, mm-hmm. uh, recovery, I, I realized like I would do lower body and do squats and I'd be sore for five to six days. And that seemed weird. And um, ultimately, we had some friends that went to a naturopathic physician. Uh, we go to Protea Life Medical Center. Uh, I see Dr. Brennan McCarthy. We, we both see Dr. Brennan McCarthy. Um, and best medical appointment, best thing I've done for my health. and oh, my, me too. Hands my down. happiness and my mental outlook and uh, really probably our marriage. You know, that was probably one of the big game changers mm-hmm. for us was balancing our hormones and realizing what a role that played in our day-to-day dynamic. Yeah. Well, walking, I remember that, that appointment, like you, we went in, we had an initial consultation, then they do blood work. And about 10 days later, is it about 10 days? 
anyway, mm-hmm. you go up for go for a follow up, and he reviews everything. And I'm talking like everything. Like he could tell how my diet was based on my blood. He could tell where um, my testosterone and my thyroid and my estrogen and progesterone and um, Pro- what progesterone progesterone. <laughs> progesterone it's a woman it's a female hormone yes but mine was i mean everything was out of whack and i just remember him sitting next to me and he's like he gave me this list i bet you feel brain fog i bet you feel exhausted i bet you feel he's like i don't know this was crazy too he's like i don't know what's going on in your lives but your stress hormone for both of you is higher than i've ever seen he's like what's going on really and he uh, and he met with me individually and and he was like, "Are you okay? Are you safe? How's your marriage? Like, like really, <laughs> genuinely, like a, like a friend. just from reading your hormones. Yes, from reading my hormones because you know stress levels were well, and brain fog. You want to talk about how brain you can- fog? Oh my gosh! Like so, yeah, I know moms can relate to this. After you have a lot of babies, you start feeling like you can't think anymore. And I thought, good heavens, when I'm eighty, I'm not gonna know anything. Like I had such a hard time." remembering things that I should have been able to Maybe remember. Maybe that's what my mom's dealing with. She's had three kids. Dude, I, it's, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, check your hormones. Cause, well, cause your thyroid hormone plays a huge role in your mental sharpness and your acuity. And so, um, not to, th- not uh, knowing my mom, she's going to watch this episode. So oh, there you go. You're, you don't forget everything. Just- <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. No, right. But anyway, that was one thing. Like he was like, Hey, I'm looking at your thyroid. So tell me like, do you have brain fog? Do you remember that? Yeah. And, and he, and you were just like, yeah. how do you know this? Right. right? It was incredible. So Need to get on that things. Joe Rogan, uh, the Joe Rogan brain focus stuff. Oh, I don't know. Oh, really? Is that a, I don't know. Is that yeah, a he, he, t- he takes a, like a, some brain supplement and he like endorses it 100% and he uses it for every episode. So I am, I'm just fact checking myself because I, after I said that, I was like, well, I think men do make a little progesterone and they do. So it's not just a female hormone. But it oh, is, okay. Is a, yeah. Does it yeah. say what it affects? Well, I'd have to read the whole article. Well, don't well, you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it. there might be some, some viewers that might not know what... Um, what these things are progesterone does a lot of things um one of the things it does is that it helps regulate in males and females actually converting estrogen uh testosterone to estrogens and and, um promoting that process and if you have excess estrogen promoting it to become testosterone and in females especially but also males um it does a lot it's they call it the pregnancy hormone most birth control pills are progesterone there so we, it tricks hey, your body into being pregnant. There we go. And I, I and I don't know. I am not that kind of doctor. My thought, though, Google doctor. <laughs> I'm a Google doctor, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I'm, I am a dentist, but you know, I'm not yes. a real doctor. <laughs> and, and I was told that pretty <laughs> vehemently a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is I was right, and that real doctor. Was wrong. But anyway, um, <laughs> and we can prove that with labs. But. Um, I don't even remember where I was going with that, but whatever. <laughs> I don't, I don't anyway, long story short, get your hormones checked. I went in there, uh, 2018, we had a blood the first time. And then I was in the midst of my, I don't know, midlife crisis for lack of a better term. And so I didn't follow up with it. One, I thought it might make things worse. I actually realized now it probably would have made things way better for yeah. both of us. And we wished we had gone in sooner because I think had we balanced our hormones correctly, it would have fixed some of the other things, some of the unintended messages we were sending each other, especially regarding our sex drive and our um, you know, relationship mm-hmm. that way, um, our physical relationship. And I, as he looked at my blood, he was like, you know, again, the same thing. The stress hormone he was looking at, I think the range is 150 to 359, I think. And mine was 470 and hers was like 460, 459, I think is what it was. And he goes, I've never seen levels as high. What's really? going on? You know? And well, you know, that was in the midst of our peak marital struggles. And um, it was, there was some bad relationship dynamics going on. And then also my testosterone, you know, for males, they wanted you to have a minimum of 500. The normal range is 500 to 1,000. Mine was rocking right around 240. Really? And he was like, wow. He's like, you know, physically, I don't understand you nor your wife. You know, your hormone profile is such that you're basically like have the testosterone of my grandma. 
and you don't look like my grandma though. You still look, you know, kind of um, athletic and more alpha and you have those secondary sexual features that, that you're still very, that are still very present, but, but your hormone profile would not support that look. And the same thing with your wife because your wife's hormones are all out of whack and she looks like a model and you know, she's in good shape and really her body is like, I don't really know how you guys are doing this other than you mentally just want those outcomes that bad. And so you're creating that those outcomes in your body with your mind because your hormones and your, your um, physiology is not supporting these things. That way, and I thought that was pretty profound and interesting. Mm-hmm. Essentially, basically, he was saying I should not have a sex drive at all. But that was all in my gotcha. head. It was all in my brain. Yeah. You know, it was part of it. And then, you know, the, the lean muscle mass I was able to carry was remarkable because I didn't have, I wasn't making testosterone. And that was my, my concerns. He said, Well, I want to put you on testosterone. And I said, Well, my concern with that is that what if I artificially supplement testosterone, then my natural production or my endogenous production of testosterone goes down? And he says, well, if you decide you want to come off testosterone, then just stop taking it. And they'll be in the exact same position you're in now because you're already not making any testosterone. <laughs> so he's like, you know, if you want to try the other side, then I would recommend we do. And he showed me a lot of studies of benefits where it's actually if you're in the ideal range for testosterone, it's protective against getting prostate cancer. Where I know testosterone a lot of times has been demonized about causing prostate cancer. And he checks my PSA scores and they are so low at this point. He last time we were on the phone, um, we did our my blood review over the phone, which isn't normal. We usually do it in person, but I was I had a stomach illness that he did not want to catch, so he, he um, <laughs> invited me to a phone call. Smart, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and but he, he basically said my PSAs were so low that I will probably never be at risk for prostate cancer, and my testosterone is not low anymore, which is great. It's right at the right at the normal level of high. And I feel fantastic. We started testosterone. I can tell you after three days after that first shot, it was an intramuscular injection. I do take um, an aromatase inhibitor that helps prevent excess testosterone to be converted into estrogen because my estrogen levels were a little too high. So not only did I have low testosterone, but I had high estrogen. Um, so essentially I was becoming more, uh, more like a woman all the time, Did which <laughs> sometimes that's lauded as really good, right? There are, there but are that some features, created, but. created conflict in your brain because your brain is like fighting against that. Right. Mm-hmm. And just wasn't, wasn't good. That was one of the reasons for the physiologic stress level coming out of my, me trying to be a, a male, a dominant male, but not having any dominant male hormones be able to do it i had some dominant female hormones interrupting my dominant male hormones Mm -hmm. and my body was fighting against itself and had we not done the blood work we wouldn't have been able to figure that out addition oh go ahead sorry uh how soon did you notice a difference okay so after my first injection of testosterone three days later i was sitting in my office it was about 11 30 in the morning um i'd gotten to the office about 5 30 i was working with my anesthesiologist on like our surgery schedule is what i call it and I was in between cases and I just took like a little 10 minute power nap and I woke up from that nap and all of a sudden, like my heart started to beat and it was like, like I could feel it. Like it was like stronger. And all of a sudden I just felt this rush of energy and I stood up and I just thought I could walk through this wall. <laughs> like I feel amazing right now. <laughs> I was like, I feel incredible. I was like, man, this is the greatest substance I've ever put in my body. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> and that's, you know, just coincidentally enough is because that's the substance your body's supposed to have already for you in it. It's yeah. supposed to make it, but mine wasn't. And most men over 40 don't. Another hormone that most men over 40 um, usually drop off a cliff is growth hormone. And c- fortunately for me, I make growth hormone. I make a lot and it's great. I'm almost at the high level of normal. And, but I wasn't until my testosterone was was at an ideal range. And then everything started to feed into itself. And he was saying that, too. He goes, for you, he goes, you need to lose 30 pounds. I did. Um, and I was I was having apnea. I needed to lose 30 pounds, not drink, um, before I went to, to sleep. Because drinking yourself to sleep usually puts you in a situation where all the musculature in your throat relaxes where you're sleeping. And you actually get into a sleep apnea situation where you may not if you're sober. So that was contributing to everything negatively. I wasn't getting quality sleep. I wasn't getting um, enough oxygen in my sleep. And so my brain was kind of not getting enough recovery and, and oxygen. Do you and have to use sleep. a CPAP? Well, so he, we, were, we were thinking about that. We were going to go down that road if I couldn't get things corrected. 
right? Mm-hmm. But we were able to correct things. Gotcha. But the main game changer in all that was idealizing my hormone levels in my body. And then the next icing on the cake was really 75 hard. Now, you don't have to do 75 hard to get those changes, but you do need to be physically active every day. And a lot of those things that that program brings into your life, you know, the mental acuity, being outside in the sunshine, vitamin D. Vitamin D is a vital supplement. Most people do not get enough vitamin D. And there's a lot of research now being done about how different communities were impacted by COVID differently because the way their body processes vitamin D differently because they have different amounts of sunlight they can get through their skin versus others. And that is a factor that really does play a role, whether you emotionally want to admit that or not. Sometimes we have some differences as human beings that physiologically do account for things and do matter. And the vitamin D thing was a big deal. Um, And the closer you get to the equator, the more uh, direct sunlight you'll have. But my understanding is even in Arizona, being as far north as we are from the equator, there's only about four to five months out of the year that we actually have enough direct sunlight to be able to convert vitamin D to the active form via getting enough sun exposure. Wow. So, you know, vitamin D, um, the lack of vitamin D, I can't think of the right term, but um, is, is a pretty ubiquitous uh, across the board. Vitamin D deficiency. Deficiency. Nice uh, work, doc. Uh, <laughs> nice work. <laughs> uh, so real quick, did they change stuff up with your hormones too? Mm-hmm. So I started taking testosterone injections as well. I also take a progesterone supplement. Um, I take medication to lower my estrogen because my estrogen was the highest he'd ever seen. And then I wasn't, um, you know. Is weak. that bad? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then that was affecting your thyroid as well. That was affecting my thyroid. So just putting everything in balance, I cannot tell you how good I feel. I feel I have more energy. I can think. I don't don't have the brain fog like I used to. And I know like almost every mom that I've talked to, like all of my friends feel that. It's it's major. Um, One thing for me too, like I was on the verge of being diabetic and, um, I was pre-diabetic and they, he really couldn't explain why he's like, I can see through your diet. It's not because of your diet. Um, you're getting the vitamins you need. You're eating healthy. Um, it really wasn't explainable why I was pre-diabetic. But then once we got everything, all my hormones in balance, that took care of itself. And with my last blood review, he's like, you're not pre-diabetic anymore. Yeah, you're- so my body was just able to function the way it needed to and resolve whatever that was on its own her a1c was almost was creeping up and that's the marker that he was looking at her blood that was he was saying it made her pre-diabetic and it is dramatically lower now yeah so So how has that changed things performance wise if you know what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) so i i definitely have a sex drive like that's the that is the biggest say that again one more time definitely (laughs) have yes you do it's fantastic (laughs) that's a game changer guys honestly it it plays a big role so hold on was there a specific hormone that That helped that? that i think it was having everything in balance testosterone she has a little i think testosterone really like um, and I'm taking and a she very takes, small amount. Yeah, I take, t- I take almost ten times the amount she supplements. But so hold on. So, for example, you, back during your story, you said that morning you got up from that quick power nap and felt like you could run through a wall. Yeah. So did you? Was there like a fall off? Like, yeah. I mean, I guess for like the or, first. Or are you at just like a steady B line now? I would say. There is a little bit, I, but I think there's less of a fall off necessarily as more it just becomes normal. Gotcha. Right. So if you're walking around. It just feels natural now. Yeah, exactly. So when it went from like no testosterone to ideal, mm-hmm. you know, high ideal, and all of a sudden it was like, hey, this is awesome. I finally feel great. Right. Yeah. And then, but now I've been idealized for over, I, I, idealized. I, just, idealized, <laughs> I just idealized myself. See what I did there? <laughs> but now that that's gotten to an ideal range, um, I... I think that's just my normal feeling is just kind of how I feel now. And so it's harder to remember not feeling like this because it's been longer ago. You know, I don't know that the effect is different because I still, it's interesting. Um, I'll, she'll do, she'll give me the injection and, um, she will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then, I'm not good with needles. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and, <laughs> and like within, I don't know, a certain, within a few minutes, I can actually feel it. I can feel really? a rush. Yeah. You can feel a rush. And she doesn't, I don't I think do you feel, feel that. So, that's what I was going to ask yeah, for you no. though. And I don't for know that it's normal that like I do. A, a physiological difference that he it, can feel. It's like an adrenaline rush. I don't feel that. For me, it's just like a baseline. I just feel better. Gotcha. So it's not like well, that's a rush awesome. or a, yeah, it's fantastic. How, but how has that impacted your sex drive? Um, I know we just thought we said it's, it's, you have one and it's I great, one. right? But what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, How's that different? I think it's helped us connect more. It certainly has helped with everything that you were feeling, yeah. right? And, and you know, change that dynamic. I feel like we have a very healthy sex life now. Well, and it's nice too. I'll get a message from you and be like, hey. And it's, um, you know, I get a, a, a loving, fun, and suggestive message from my wife basically saying, hey, you need to come home as soon as you can. That's fun. That's fun to get that during the day. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's nice to hear those kinds of things, right, from your wife again. And some things you may not be used to saying anymore, but maybe you did early in your relationship. And that's one thing I think with relationship dynamics that it is important to remember. You need to continually I, – I know we always talk about dating, date night, date your spouse, right? I think a lot of people do that. I, I think that may not be strong enough wordage. I think – you need to court, continue to court your wife. Like a courtship was, was when you were trying to convince her that she needed to marry you and that you were that neat and convince, and you were trying to convince him that he needed to marry you because you were that neat. And how did you act? Do you act differently now? And why? And, and that's and, natural. That's a natural it is, progression it is, in relationships. But to, but to it also It is a natural progression in relationships, but is it, is it good? Is it a good, is it a good you know, progression in relationships? Well, there, well, there's a need there to for each of you to feel wanted and um, sought after. Right, right exactly. And, um, pursued. So, pursued, yeah. Pursued. And, yeah. It, and if you're not pursuing each other, you know, um, for, the mo- for the most part, most, most relationships, I think, are at risk of outside pursuits if you're not feeling internally pursued. And now the individual character can be strong enough to resist those outside pursuits, and they should be, but when times get hard and stress and real life and no hormones and all these things, um, your brain doesn't work right. And so you may be a little more susceptible to an outside pursuit if you're not putting enough internal pursuits into your own marriage. Was that clear? Did I, am, I, am I being yeah. too vague? No. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, I feel like my it, kids are I, looking at me while we're watching the, or we're talking <laughs> about this. So <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so the episode before this was diving more into just being – able to talk about it yeah it what is is what it sounded like it started at so now we dove into the hormones you know is there anything after that like that you want to attack or I mean, like after it? after great sex no what? no life's <laughs> life's well, great what more do you need life dude no, no. Yeah. <laughs> well i just didn't know if there was any more factors after you went to the hormonal doctor like you talked about it got to that point Hormonal doctor got to that point. As far as in our marriage, like getting things back well, to good. Well, well, well that, there's tons with that, but like it's we we were talking about the sex drive right. between a, a relationship and a marriage after so many years, you know. So right. I didn't know. Um, should we close out? On- That's kind of what I was trying to hit on, though. Um, is that like, you know, how did you flirt with your spouse in the beginning, right? And what did you do? And how did you present yourself? And if it's different now, why? Why is it different? It's normal that it's different. You pointed that out. It's normal that it's going to be different. But I would argue maybe it's not good that it's different. Maybe it is good. We all mature and we change and we have different needs. But your spouse still needs to feel like you're totally into them and you totally still want them. And you need to validate those feelings in your spouse. And even if it feels a little bit awkward at first to send a sexy hot text, like you haven't done that for 20 years or whatever, like <laughs> yeah. that's, that's real too, but, but do it anyway. Like mm-hmm. you'll get to the point where it's fun and it's, mm-hmm. and you want to have that connection and that fire between you again. And that's one thing that I'm so grateful that, um, that I honestly thought I didn't know if we would ever get it back. Or even, or even, I mean, it's even better. Like our, our connection and our passion for each other is better now than it ever was. But going through all of the hard, um, 
I just didn't, I didn't know that if we were going to be able to get to this place. And so I just want to give hope to anybody who is in the midst of the struggle that you can absolutely get there. You can get there. You can have the relationship that you want. You, you got to put in some work. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You got to be, I mean, it's more work than you think it's going to be. It is. And it's hard and it is not fun sometimes. Yeah. I remember about a year ago, just over a year ago, sitting on that bathroom floor. I was both crying. I was both scared. Yeah. Yeah. We were both heartbroken, both hurting, both wanting the same thing. That's one thing that we talked over and over. We're like, hey, we know ultimately we want the same thing, which thank goodness, because if you're in a marriage and you're, you and your spouse don't want the same things, I mean, how difficult. We wanted the same things. We knew we loved each other. We knew we wanted to be married. We knew like... I mean, all the things, we had the same goals, and it was like, why is this so freaking hard? Why? Like, And we couldn't answer, like, why is this so hard? And um, through counseling, realizing there were a lot of factors, you know, well, and, making you know, it hard. And, and introducing maybe the another topic, another rabbit hole jump down, and why was I so drawn to those things that were killing us? Yeah. You know, why did I have such a pull to that? Um, and it was... That ought to be for another episode. It, I know. Yeah. It, it, it ultimately felt external. Like I was not in control of that pool. Yeah. Um, but there was something you said that made me think of something, and I already forgot it. Anyway, I'm sure. Well, oh, I was going to ask you about your PT-141 shots. Do you want to talk oh, about those? These are fantastic. <laughs> okay. PT-141. I don't, I don't even honestly know what it is. <laughs> my, <laughs> my doctor gives me this shot, and he says, hey, this is going to make you want to have sex in it does. So for him, the way he described it to me, it's if you, if it's something that you were to take all the time, your body would be exhausted. Like it's not maintainable to just take all the time. It's meant for like, if you're going away for the weekend and you just want to have like a fun, hot weekend or like, I don't know. Or if you're feeling like maybe your sex drive isn't where you want it to be, it's a good supplement for that. So, um, I, do you know what it is? <laughs> I feel like well, I should know what it is. It's a peptide, and okay. um, it's a, an injectable peptide that I don't necessarily know what it does. Or and why, I think why that so, works that way. And I think men and women can take it. It's not just for women. But he told but why me are you laughing? He, because <laughs> Doctor McCarthy told me he's like, you do not let Lonnie take this. <laughs> well, he I, does not need this. I, I, I typed in PT one forty one and. There's questions like, what does peptide PT-141 do? Is it a prescription? But then there's a question here that says, does PT-141 make you tan? Mm, interesting. So you also have okay, I tan also have shots a bit that you've done. That. So yes, I do take tan shots, which... Um, <laughs> They're a different te peptide. So the tan shots and the PT-141 have some similarity in the way that I feel like like sexually. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what it is, but the tan shots are not the same level, I would say. PT-141 is stronger, for sure. But it just, I don't know, it gives you like a boost to your sex drive. It's fantastic. So do once, but now that your testosterone's fairly leveled out and yeah. you've got it dialed in, I feel like, um, again, a low dose testosterone, but... And bioidentical, don't do a synthetic. That'll mess your liver up. Don't take a pill. Bioidentical injectable testosterone. And anyway. have a doctor, have a good doctor, like make sure that your levels are right. Because if you're too All your high, levels, not yes, just those. Not yes. just those levels. If you're just doing testosterone, uh, chances are you're you're not getting what, the- What I was going to ask method. you though is like, do you feel like you need your PT-141 shots like you did originally? No. Now that your testosterone is dialed in, do you feel like you're- No. But no, and I don't your feel progesterone, like, Your testosterone and progesterone really are dialed in now. So right. you were taking so the PT first, before? Yes. Oh. Well, at first I felt like I needed it to be able gotcha. to be where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like it's just an added- fun boost yeah. when I want it. You know what? I, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Side effects though. Um, 
it does make you feel a little bit nauseous for about, I'd say, an hour. So does the Not, tan shot too, right? So does the tan shot. Yeah. yeah, which is until, so with tan shots, the way it works is you kind of build up your levels and then you take smaller amounts to maintain. Gotcha. Um, once you're on those smaller amounts, like I don't get nauseous at all, but just that building phase makes me feel, I've never thrown up. Just never. a little disclaimer too. We're still not sure about the safety profile of the tan shots. We're not promoting the tan shots. We're just letting you know information <laughs> yeah. we've obtained through personal experience I'll, here. I'll, I'll nobody put, knows. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put a, <laughs> a, disclaimer. a disclaimer in the bio of the video. But if you're interested, you can find out more about the tanning shots at the doctorshot.com. We are not yeah. medical doctors. Right. We are not medical right. doctors. <laughs> we are just giving But I can tell you, I have experiences. not had a sunburn since I started doing the tanning shots i only tan and to me that's gotta be good you also just had a mole cut off your back i did <laughs> that we are that's I that's did. out for they're they're ch- and i have i've had out some pathology before, right. and did you get everything's freeze been off? no she cut it off, cut it off to, to biopsy. biopsy oh okay yeah uh, and just yeah to make so i do get regular skin checkups to make mm-hmm. sure because that's there's good. not research and i really yeah. don't know one thing like my freckles and everything yep. get darker so what does that mean they don't know no. anyway <laughs> well, nevertheless. well it said that pt stuff is made from melatonin too oh interesting so oh. it's got to be why it has a similarity then yeah yeah so that might be why your freckles are getting darker yeah also so yeah anyway very good. Well, hey, babe. Thank you. We uh, I think we covered that fairly well. Um, we need to have Dr. McCarthy on. But until yes. then, ProteaLife.com. You can learn more about his services. Look at all these free plugs we're giving out to people. That's good. Go see them. They're yeah. fantastic. Change your life, yeah. honestly. You know, I, again, too, um, I, we have a relative who has had thyroid cancer, was seen an endocrinologist. Mol- she's been to different endocrinologists and was on thyroid hormones. Um, went and had their blood evaluated at Protea and turns out no active thyroid hormones circulating in her blood. I don't know how that's possible seeing multiple endocrinologists, but you go to this natural path that most people think are quacks, right? But you go to these guys and they examine all your body systems by looking at your blood. They understand how they all interact together. And within three weeks, we saw our relative and she was visibly, she was just visibly different. She was thinner. She looked happier. She had more energy and she said she felt fantastic. Yeah. So um, your hormones definitely play a huge role, probably more than we ever give any of them credit for in how you feel, what you think about and why. And if, you know, you're like most couples and your um, relationship dynamic may not quite be what you want it to be and your bedroom dynamic may not quite be what either of you want it to be. Um, that may be a bigger factor. Gosh, start there. Than you. Start there. Yes. <laughs> like that's huge, and it's an easy, it's an easy way to fix a lot of problems. All right, thank you. Thank you for listening. Hey, don't forget hit that subscribe button, clicky clicky. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate your support. <laughs> <laughs>